Over the years, I've worked on many embedded applications from small scale to, to full scale uh, robotic systems. And, and one challenge kept coming up again and again is how do we make reliable communication between different parts of the system, especially when, when the system grows more complex. Example, uh, you have a robot with, with multiple uh, motor drivers with, with plenty of sensors and the, the controller unit has to reliably communicate with all these units. And, and the even worse, if you have several controllers um, that require data from all these sensors, the wiring, um, the, the communication, everything is gonna be a mess. That's why nowadays uh, in embedded applications, we have a demanding um, interest in, in reliable, fast, and, and scalable communication buses. So that's where the CAN controller area network comes into the scene. Um, initially designed for automotive industry, nowadays you will find the CAN interface everywhere in, in robotics, in drones, in automotive industry, in industrial applications, in, in medical devices, everywhere. So that's why knowing the CAN interface definitely will help you in your career path. You will definitely stand out from others. And also, of course, it will help you in your projects. It could be like professional work or it could be your personal projects. In any case, knowing the CAN interface will help you a lot. So in this course, I will go through the CAN interface and the implementation of the CAN interface using the SDM32 microcontroller. Uh, in this uh, course, we will cover not only th the theory, which is really essential, but also we will learn how to build the CAN interface, how to debug, and uh, in general, how to work with the CAN interface. So by the end of this course, you will be confident in working with the with the CAN interface using the STEM 32 microcontroller. So so specifically in this video we will cover only the theory, the motivation why we use the CAN interface, and we will look uh, some specific features of the CAN interface. So let's get started. So first let's look uh, at why why we need the CAN interface. Why just not to use I square C or SPI? So to understand that, let's look at this illustration. So this illustration um, depicts uh, shows the the topology of of the classical interfaces. So so in I square C or SPI, we have a master, we have um, multiple slaves, and all these slaves can send or receive data from the master. But what if we have not just a single master, but, but several masters, several controllers? For example, you have a vehicle and you have you might have engine uh, system, the braking system, and the, all these controllers might require data from the same sensors. So in those cases, uh, the, the classical interface cannot uh, meet the demand and they they sh uh, they fall behind. So that's why we have the CAN interface. So in this interface, uh, we have multiple nodes, and any node can sa send uh, send or receive data from from other nodes freely. So there is no any restriction. So it's not like a single master, multiple slave communication. Instead, we have a broadcasting system where one node can send data to other nodes. So that's uh, the main advantage of, the, of using the CAN interface. Another big advantage of the CAN interface is that it is really robust to external disturbances. And I personally experienced that problem. Long time ago, when I was a student, I worked in a small project when I had a like a microcontroller 
with the IME sensor and they I use the cable to 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 connect them basically and my S square C kept failing and failing and I spent hours days to to debug and after multiple days I realized that the problem is not in my code it's not about the I square C it is about the cable I square C or SPI do not work well when you have cables they work pretty well when everything is in the same board but for but those uh, these interfaces are not designed for wired communication uh, but with the CAN interface uh, you can use like really long cables like in meters and uh, with the sufficiently low baud rate it will work reliably so that's why I think the CAN interface uh, was designed in automotive industry you have for example if you take a car uh, you need uh, like a long cables so here I listed all the main advantages of the CAN interface and uh, this uh, page you can find uh, the link in the description below and it is accessible for everyone so let's move on and let's look at the CAN routing CAN interface so uh, as I said to you before the CAN interface is really reliable uh, and it's pretty robust to external disturbances this is because it is because in the CAN interface we use differential ended uh, cable a differential ended system so for example if you take i square c or spi we have just a single data line and when you use like a cable like a wire you have a noise in addition to that and the receiver instead of this clean data it will receive this noisy data and if you use sufficiently no long cable, uh, the receiver cannot uh, longer decode the data. So, so for example, if it symbols this specific case, it doesn't know whether it's a zero or one. So that's why eventually it will receive corrupted data. In differential um, ended signal, on the other hand, we have two data lines. So we have a CAN positive and CAN negative. So we have, of course, the wire, the noise, we cannot avoid it. But the interesting thing is that when we use the same cable, the noise will affect those lines in the same way. And when the receiver data receives um, the, this um, signal, what it does, it takes a difference. And since the noise affected both signals, in the same way, when we subtract, when we take the difference, the noise data will be cancelled and we will receive pretty uh, clean data. And for the receiver, it can easily decode the data. So that's why with using the CAN interface allow us to allows us to use the long cables. So, and it is also true for the USB interface. Next, let's look at the at the routing of the of the CAN interface. So, as I said, to you we have multiple nodes. So instead of uh, so instead of nodes, you can think of it as as microcontrollers or controllers, and and the, those nodes usually have TX and RX lines, TX, RX, and ground. Let's say, and you need special hardware. We call it CAN transceiver with which takes this TX and the RX lines and converts those signals into CAN negative and CAN positive data. So usually these uh, transceivers look like this. So you have a microcontroller, for example. From the microcontroller, you have TX RX lines that you connect to the, the to the transceiver, and as an output, we have CAN negative CAN. Uh, can positive, then you have ground, which you can connect to other CAN transceiver. So this is how we can do routing in the CAN interface. And uh, 
interesting thing is that as you see we have this topology when everyone connect uh, everyone can communicate so where any pair can communicate with each other but we have just a single bus so how is that possible so this is the question for the next tutorial when we uh, understand the con frame format and another um, important a topic in the CAN interface, which is the arbitration. Um, I don't know who designed the CAN interface, but these behind scene figures, they did a really great job. It is really be beautifully designed um, protocol. And then in the next topic, we will understand what the beauty of the CAN is, and especially the, the arbitration. So thanks a lot for uh, for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, to press the like button, and also don't forget to check mystepschool.com where you find courses um, in STM32 programming and in robotic topics, robotics topics. So see you soon and thanks a lot.